Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing the Milliman Care Guidelines. So many of you are familiar with the large actuarial for Milliman, but we're going to specifically talk about the Milliman Care Guidelines. Okay, but in order to talk about the Milliman Care Guidelines, we first have to talk about medical policy. Okay, so medical policy is a specific insurance term, and it's used by the carriers. And what it means is, is, is it, it's used for determination if medical care is effective or medically necessary. Okay, so medical policy determines if medical care is effective or medically necessary. Why is that important? Because ineffective, in other words, unproven or experimental care is, and not medically necessary care, is typically not covered. In other words, medical policy is the source of Denials. This is where the denials come from. They come from the medical policy. It's the fine print in your insurance policy, either on paper or online when you look at it. Okay, great. Medical policy administ is administered in conjunction with Milliman Care Guidelines. Okay, this is where we get to Milliman. Okay, oftentimes just referred to as MCG Care Guidelines. If you look at like the carrier's website, they'll, they'll call them MCG Care Guidelines. Okay, wonderful. Now, what is the history of the Milliman Care Guidelines? Okay. Milliman Care Guidelines was a subsidiary of Milliman, but now it's owned by Hearst Health, okay? And it was bought and transferred from Milliman over to Hearst in 2012 when Hearst bought them. Okay, fantastic. Now, a little bit more background about how pervasive these Milliman Care Guidelines are. They're used by the eight largest health plans in America. Not seven out of the eight, eight out of the eight largest. Okay, they're used by 1,900 hospitals. Oh, by the way, that's the majority of hospitals in America. It's used by Medicare auditors. In other words, most of Medicare uses the MCG care guidelines. Okay, industry. They impact, according to their own website, they impact 208 million covered lives. Okay, that's also known as like almost two thirds of America. Okay, 85% of all discharges in some way, shape, or form are related to the Milliman Care Guidelines. Wow, that is powerful. All right, so if it's so powerful, who in the world are these Hearst people that own it? Okay, Hearst Health is owned by Hearst, right? As in like William Randolph Hearst, as in the famous newspaper guy from the 1800s, as in like the Patty Hearst thing from the 1970s. Okay. They have 10 billion in revenue. It's owned by the Hearst family. It's like 67 people that like collectively own Hearst. Okay, they got 10 billion in revenue. It's the 24th largest privately owned company in America. They own 360 businesses, right? So it's a huge media company. It owns the Houston Chronicle, the San Francisco Chronicle. They own a bunch of bunch of magazines like Cosmo. They own a bunch of local TV stations. They own cable networks like A&E and the History Channel. They own Fitch, which is a rating uh, agency like Moody's or Standard & Poor's for like bond ratings. So, okay, what is my point for you today? The point is, is that medical policy for most of America is created in conjunction with a single source, and that single source is Hearst. That single source, Hearst, also owns major news and media outlets. So. Does that create a conflict in terms of like reporting on the Milliman Care Guidelines? Like, would the Houston Chronicle or the San Francisco Chronicle actually report on it? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Okay, is there disclosure when these media outlets report on healthcare? Do they disclose that they are owned by the same company that owns the rule book for over two thirds of Americans? Okay, and then lastly, look, Healthcare coverage and payment determination is already highly centralized. It's already highly centralized. In this world we live in today, where we talk about Medicare for all, we already have highly centralized rules. We already have it. I'm not here to debate Medicare for all or not. I'm just saying, in terms of the centralization of healthcare decision making, for two-thirds of American, eight of the largest carriers, 1,900 hospitals, we already have it. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.